Greetings, viewers, friends, as it were. I'm Ben. Welcome to an episode of Black Metal and Brews, a YouTube program in which I discuss, well, beer and black metal, among other kinds of music. Uh, <clears throat> it's been a good bit since we've seen each other, uh, but w our visits are about to become far more frequent. Um, I will leave a link or a timestamp in the bottom of the video or in the comments so that you can skip to the concert description, which is what this video is. Uh, but first we're going to take a quick moment to discuss the fact that I have uh, quit my day job to do this full time. Uh, this being mo so much more than my YouTube channel. Uh, I Many of you only know about this and that's great. Uh, Jareth doesn't know about any of it, but she's still having a good time. Um, I also have blackmetalandbrews.com, my website where I uh, have written reviews, and I freelance for uh, currently just noisy, uh, but uh, the goal is of course to write for other publications as well. So uh, with that in mind, a lot of new things will be coming in the very near future. I, uh, I hope to be making these videos more frequently. Um, my new budget as a freelancer may be a little different. So for a bit, you may see me going for uh, decidedly more uh, affordable beers. This uh, beer is a mid-range price, so I'm not going to call this affordable. This isn't a cheap beer, but it's not an expensive one. Um, but for those of you who've enjoyed some of my more Holy Grail type videos, uh, it may be a little bit before I get back to drinking an $8 bottle of beer when I don't have a 40 hour week job. The nice thing is I have more time to digest music, to think about music, to write about music, and Consequently, of course, to share music with you, my friends. Um, that That is the primary reason I wanted to go independent on this anyway. I didn't want to keep barely struggling to catch up on new music. I wanted to be able to really uh, sift through things, find stuff that is remarkable, engaging, and worth your time and mine. <clears throat> so, with that in mind, uh, to celebrate... Uh, we're going to be consuming uh, the fantastic Doppelbach uh, celebrated by Iinger. Uh, so metal it even comes with a goat on a chain. On a chain, on a string. Uh, <laughs> they're cute little trinkets. Uh, my cat likes to play with them if I'm not careful. So, in addition to that, we're going to discuss uh, three concerts over the course of two nights that I attended uh, in the last week. Um, for those of you wondering, there will be a Roadburn video soon. That's just a serious undertaking, and I don't want to, uh, try and incorporate that with these two. So, <clears throat> Saturday night was May. God, I'm bad at my dates. I don't, I don't remember what day of the month it was. Uh, May 7th. Uh. I began my evening at uh, Brass About Loud Label's uh, headquarters uh, for a basement gig, which of course ran a little late, as these things tend to do, and that's okay. Um, with that in mind, I only got to see the two, first two bands because I had to hop to another show. Uh, the opener was Nefaria, who I've mentioned here on YouTube before. Uh, they, they had a new singer. Uh, admittedly, the sound was, it was a little muddy. Uh, not on the band's part, but, you know, you're in a cramped basement. But the singer sounded good, the band sounded just, just that cold, melodic uh, black metal they played. They played They played really well. Uh, it was a delight to see them again, especially having caught them before, knowing what to expect. It was just really, uh, it was really nice to catch them, to catch up with friends. It was the first show I'd really gone to since returning from my travels. Oh boy. So, here we see Celebrator in all its glory. Just classic, uh, dark, beautiful, multi body, uh, thick head. This is brewed in accordance with the purity standard, uh, the Ryan and, uh, God, I can smell the just beautiful, like, raisin sort of breadiness from here. I do love raisin bread, so I guess it makes sense. Uh, so, anyway. Nefaria put on a delightful show. Um, it was nice to see to see the new edition. I'm really intrigued to see where they go next. Uh, they've got uh, they've got a really 
full Bandcamp page uh, that I really urge you to peruse. Um, next was uh, label mates uh, as far as terms of CW Productions goes. Uh, Billa Rubin, they're set. <coughs> they seem to have a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm not sure the exact nature of which. Um, partway through their set, I did find myself heading upstairs uh, as it was actually clearer sound upstairs than uh, in the basement. I managed to uh, get video of their the first song of their set, which I guess is probably always uh, the song Antique Marvel. Um, they they sounded they sounded pretty wonderful to me though, um, and I had a really good time catching them as well. Uh, urgent, you know, almost that that kind of calculatedly sloppy black punk uh, with strong strong melodic leads. Uh, sporadic howling vocals really uh really great black punk band uh if you you know on the weirder side of it too not just you know straight bone all warship like a lot of folks get um so I, I i urge you if you didn't check them out after my last video in which i mentioned them do it um i really hope they've got new material their demo's been out for years and it's great but i'd like to hear more um than just that that, that handful of songs i think it's just three tracks because um, they're a really, really fun band to see live. Uh, the other two bands on that bill that I did not get to see were Cost, which is, uh, I believe, Danny from Rohit, uh, and uh, along with him, I know Derek from Purity of Essence performed, as well as somebody else whose name I'm forgetting. I, I wasn't there, obviously. I heard their set was fantastic, and closing out the night was Brass of Bat, Let's Own, Dagger Lust. It was their first show, and I'm kind of kicking myself for missing it. Woo! However, I uh, had to find my way over to Panic Room, uh, which is a little more of an established venue, uh, not quite the uh, basement show vibe, but uh, for a really diverse bill, um, I missed the opener Disembowel Arena, who are a local uh, doomy uh, chamber quartet. Quartet? I don't know how many people are in Disembowel Arena. Again, I missed their set. I know that they play chamber music, and it is <coughs> fantastic. I'll actually be reviewing uh, their most recent album quite soon. Keep an eye out if you're into that sort of thing. Um, uh, although I, d I did get a chance to uh, catch up with uh, one of the members of the band and chat for a bit, and that was really nice. Um, I showed up right in time to witness Order of Bagash, who I have been on my 2C list for a, l for a good little while. I really, it was really fun to catch their kind of thrashy death metal. Uh, I'm always really impressed when a drummer of a band sings uh, in any capacity, um, you know, whether it's being the sole vocalist or even just doing backing vocals. To me, that, that's really cool. That's hard to do. I can't, I can't even imagine singing in a band half the time and playing any instrument, but drumming especially, you know, that takes that takes a lot. Um, and Order of the Gash's presence was on. They seemed like they were just having an amazing time. Uh, sorry, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a smacking contest now. It seems. Um, so it was really cool to catch them. I had a really good time, and uh, it was well overdue. I'll say too. They've been they've been a band I've been meaning to catch since I since I knew of them. You know, probably a year and a half now. Um, Sorry, gonna have a chip and hummus break for a second because that's what I like to do. Um, somebody likes the chips though, so I can move those. Um, anyway, Order of the Gash was killer. It was really fun to finally catch them. Following Order of the Gash was I have Nix, a band who I've. Uh, Long championed, well, long as in like two years now, maybe. <coughs> um, they've been on, they've been one of those bands that just consistently impresses me, surprises me, and, uh, you know, is unfailingly creative and unique in a community that doesn't always reward that so well. But every bill I've seen them on has been complimentary and diverse, and I feel like that alone makes for a great time. But Catching their post-punk doom black metal with theatrical operatic moments is absolutely stunning, and this was probably the best time I'd ever caught them. They were 
their most explosive form. They're actually in Portland right now uh, recording a record uh, with Billy Anderson. Um, and, oh, oh my gosh, if, if, if their performance the other night is any indication, um, the rhythm section is such an... I, I feel like I often focus on, uh, on their singer Joy because her voice is so jarring and so grabbing, but the, the rhythm section um, really, really holds it down as well. Uh, the drummer Justin is a remarkable drummer. Uh, when he's backed up by, uh, by kind of all-around multi-instrumentalist Masaki, uh, Misaki will often join him on a on a on a tom. It gets very very akin to neurosis in that regard, um, but it's so fantastic. It's really, it, as, at least for me as a, as an audience member and somebody who's seen them a couple of times, I still found myself just absolutely entranced and not anxious, but uh, filled with anticipation. Uh, it was a really a gripping performance from a band I already knew to be good, and even I was surprised at how great of a time I had. Um, but I mean, and that you know, focusing on the rhythm section there is not to take away from the rest of the band, obviously. But uh, it was you know, it was only just the other night, Saturday night, when it really occurred to me how great they are as a live act. Um, bear with me on all this coughing. <clears throat> I I'm fending off allergies or something. And I just have not been able to shake this dry cough I've got, so bear with me. Thank you. Um, following them were was uh, just local. I don't even know how to call, what to call them. Experimental doom, black noise duo Taurus, uh, which is uh, Stevie from Dark Castle and uh, Ashley who uh, drums and. Uh, is also a member of Insect Arc, and I'm, she may do other things as well. I, I'll admit to not having done my research beforehand. Sorry. Um, I caught them once, probably five years ago, opening for Aglog, maybe four years ago, uh, in Florida when I still lived there. And uh, they were really impressive then. Their set the other night, though, was head and shoulders above it. It was really, really fun, really compelling, gripping, just there was a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. Um, not that they lacked it before, but I think coming into it, having a better idea of what the band was, I was more prepared to accept it. Uh, uh, I'll admit I haven't listened to their more recent of their two albums. I only know their first record, uh, so that may be part of it too. Uh, their new, their 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 whole set was just just this flowing, seamless series of experiences, rather than. <clears throat> It seemed to lack any uh, sort of conventional compositional structure, although there were certainly m movement, there was flow to it, but it, it was almost just like glimpses of feelings uh, and shapes and textures. And I hate the term ritualistic because that I feel that often takes away from groups that have some sort of spiritual connection to what they're doing. Maybe Taurus does, I'll, I'll admit to not knowing. Uh, but it, it felt very, not ritualistic being the wrong word, but also the word that comes to mind. Uh, it felt very connected, personal, uh, almost like the two were channeling something that I couldn't quite grasp, but that they clearly were uh, in the grip of. In other words, an amazing night uh, at both gigs. Uh, wish I could have been able to see every band at both shows, but just that's not how time works. Um, Fast forward a few days uh, to yesterday, Wednesday, I'm filming this on Thursday, you'll probably see it tomorrow on Friday. Uh, yesterday was my first day on, uh, as a freelancer, as being entirely self-employed. And I had the most wonderful opportunity to catch a uh, house show um, featuring, featuring a handful of locals and a touring package. Um, <coughs> and that was... Uh, the groups were uh, Oriax, you know, from Headliner Down, or from the last band down, Fairlight Empress, uh, Joel Shanahan, and System Lords. System Lords starting things off was wonderful, wonderful electronic. Uh, and this was all an almost exclusive, well, an exclusively electronic show, experimental electronics. <coughs> Goodness, excuse me. Um, gonna grab my water bottle. 
System Lord started things off with uh, what sounded like uh, like almost video game, sort of like old uh, Super Nintendo kind of textures, which quickly became, you know, warped as, as he manipulated uh, the sound through, through some sort of pad that was controlling it all. Um, percussion was introduced, things became very slippery is the best way. There were lots of slippery, bubbly sounds, lots of things kind of fading in and out quickly, being pulled out of thin air. Uh, my verbiage for electronic music and experimental music is really weak, and I apologize. Uh, due to the nebulous freeform nature of the music, though, I feel that sometimes not having that technical terminology cultivates more of a sense of the actual experience I had rather than the musicality. I hope it has merit to you, uh, my friend. But System Lords really impressed me. Uh, I was not previously familiar with his other project, uh, Antecessor, uh, but I'm really excited to check them out. I guess they're a little more of a frequent performer, but uh, System Lords is great as well. I was thoroughly impressed. Um, following him was uh, just Joel Shanahan, just performs under his name. Uh, his uh, he, he played two tracks, I believe, two songs, tracks, whatever, um, of just this really just kind of blissful sort of house music, perhaps. Um, again, the, I feel the more I hear music, the less I understand genres and the distinctions between them. Anyway, it was really just kind of solid motion. It was the closest I came to dancing all night, although admittedly dancing for me looks like I'm bobbing my head and just kind of enjoying it, because I was. Um, it was the kind of show... You know, I mean, there, there were maybe 25 people in attendance. It was a very intimate uh, sort of thing, and it was absolutely wonderful. Just, uh, just the building, cascading nature of what I'm assuming is house music here uh, was really, really fun to witness in the middle of stuff that was a little more off the wall and experimental. Um, so it, it was this kind of just moment of just, Bliss, and I could tell that uh, the artist himself was having a really good time performing it and sharing it with us as well. Um, that was just really, really fun to witness. Uh, up next was the act that I had gone there to see, although again, knew very little of, it was Fairlight Empress. Uh, a collaboration between Grey, uh, um, who performs as Hive Mind, uh, and is also a member of Pure Ground, uh, and Lee, who is Oil Thief. Uh, so seeing them. They're, they're touring as both High Mind and Oil Thief, but also doing a couple of Fairlight Empress sets. Uh, knowing that their show in a few days do didn't have a Fairlight Empress set, I had to catch this as well. Uh, and I was not disappointed in the slightest. Uh, th it was almost just like this soothing bed of uh, ambient noise with industrial elements. Lee would occasionally uh, speak or chant or sing. But by and large, it was just this really just kind of hypnotic set of just textures. Of very, I was oddly comforted by the music, knowing how oppressive hive mind can be. I really had not expected to find such uh, soothing, meditative uh, sounds coming from this duo. But I really, really wished... Uh, that they, they had recorded output. There's a track on a Nostalevo compilation uh, called The Alliance that I've got, but beyond that, um, you know, there's really not a lot of Fairlight Empress out there. If you search a hashtag on Instagram, you can find a little bit, and I think there's a YouTube video of a performance. But really minimal stuff, but I cannot wait to find more output from these two uh, in collaboration, but and both as individuals as well. Uh, closing up the night was Oriax. Uh, Oriax is a <clears throat> fellow who, whose property this occurred on, um, and uh, played just this massive, massive just synth rack. Uh, I, I, I don't know my terminology again. For those of you who are real gearheads, I apologize as an idiot. I believe it was all modular, maybe not. Um, but absolutely just like percussive shifting. Uh, very beat-driven uh, electronic music. Um, I apologize for rushing here. My phone looks like it's telling me it's low on time to film this, and I don't want to cut off. 
but absolutely uh, vibrant, high energy way to close out the show, to close out the night. Um, I found myself having a wonderful time from start to finish. Uh, I wasn't even able to drink because I was even drier on the front than I am today. And I still just found myself having the best time. I keep saying found myself. I had an amazing time. Uh, all of these artists deserve your support. As with as with each of these videos, I'll leave links to, to the artists where I can. I urge you to support them all. I didn't really talk about this beer much. All you need to know is that this is the standard for a Doppelbach. Get it. You deserve it. I'm Ben. This is Black Metal and Brews. So many more good things to share in the near future. I love you all. Cheers. We'll talk very soon.